Welcome to Guideline Central. I'm Dr. Tabitha Misho, and today we will be discussing the new American Association of Clinical Endocrinology's Clinical Practice Guideline on Pharmacologic Management of Adults with Dyslipidemia, published on February 3, 2025. Now, this guideline is intended to provide a focused update to their 2017 guidelines on the management of dyslipidemia and prevention of cardiovascular disease guidelines, and offers new and updated recommendations for the pharmacologic management of adults with dyslipidemia to prevent adverse cardiovascular outcomes. Now, this guideline is intended for adults who are 18 years or older with an elevated LDL cholesterol and or triglyceride levels, and is intended to give recommendations for pharmacologic interventions with the ones being discussed approved by the US FDA. Now, dyslipidemia was defined as LDL cholesterol levels of greater than 130 mg per deciliter in the general population and greater than 70 mg per deciliter in individuals with cardiovascular disease. Hypertriglyceridemia was defined as triglyceride levels greater than 150 mg per deciliter, and severe hypertriglyceridemia was defined as triglyceride levels of 500 mg per deciliter or more. Now, this guideline was developed using a grade framework, meaning for each recommendation, there will be both a certainty of evidence grading as either high, moderate, low, or very low, or insufficient, as well as a strength of evidence grading as either strong, conditional, no recommendation, or a good practice statement. Now, this guideline has 13 new recommendations, so let's get into the guidelines. For our first recommendation from the American Association of Clinical Endocrinology, or ACE, this one says that, for primary prevention in adults with dyslipidemia, ACE recommends for the use of a validated tool or calculator to predict future risk of ASCVD events as part of a shared decision-making around treatment. Now, this is a good practice statement, so it is ungraded, but they do include the note that, ASCVD risk assessment is a central component in person-centered management of dyslipidemia, However, there is limited utility in broad application in adding coronary artery calcium scores, apolipoprotein B, and lipoprotein A measurements. Additional testing may be considered for individuals at intermediate risk who understand the potential additional costs of testing and still value the risk information ascertained from using a coronary artery calcium score, apolipoprotein B, and or a lipoprotein A to inform a treatment decision. For our second recommendation, in adults with dyslipidemia who are on maximally tolerated statins and have ASCVD or are at increased risk for ASCVD but are not at goal, which is an LDL cholesterol of less than 70 mg per deciliter, ACE suggests for the use of evolocumab or alirocumab in addition to usual care. This is a conditional recommendation with a moderate certainty of evidence. Our third recommendation says, in adults with dyslipidemia who do not have ASCVD, ACE suggests against the use of eulocumab or alirocumab in addition to usual care. This is a conditional recommendation with a moderate certainty of evidence, though they do include the note that there is currently no direct evidence comparing evolocumab to alirocumab. Use of either monoclonal antibody may be considered. Most trial participants were at increased risk for ASCVD or were being treated for secondary prevention. It is unclear if the benefits outweigh the harms for use of these agents in adults at lower risk for ASCVD. The task force considered ASCVD risk to include individuals with known risk factors based on clinical judgment or risk assessment tools. For our fourth recommendation, there is insufficient evidence to make a recommendation for or against the use of insulicerin in adults with dyslipidemia. So there is no recommendation due to insufficient evidence, but they do include the note that, Overall, there were very few trials in cardiovascular events, preventing determination of the balance of potential benefits and harms for use of insulin in addition to usual care. Adequately powered long-term cardiovascular outcome trials are needed. For our fifth recommendation, in adults with dyslipidemia who are statin intolerant and have ASCVD or at increased risk for ASCVD, A suggests for the use of bempedoic acid in addition to usual care. This is a conditional recommendation with a moderate certainty of evidence. For our sixth recommendation, in adults with dyslipidemia who do not have ASCVD and who may tolerate other lipid-lowering medications, ACE suggests against the use of bempedoic acid in addition to usual care. This is a conditional recommendation with a moderate certainty of evidence. Though they do include the note that, Patients should be informed that while bempedoic acid may lead to a small reduction in myocardial infarction, there may be a risk of potential harms, including gout, cholelithiasis, and tendon rupture. Therefore, a shared decision-making approach that includes a discussion about the potential benefits and harms should guide the treatment choice. 
There was substantial heterogeneity in the trial populations related to the use of other lipid-lowering medications, including some participants taking low-dose statins. Evidence for primary prevention is limited. A secondary analysis from the large trial showed a potential benefit for primary prevention. However, the number of individuals was small, and all participants were at high risk for ASCVD. For our seventh recommendation, in adults with hypertriglyceridemia, which is triglyceride levels between 150 to 499 milligrams per deciliter, who have cardiovascular disease or at increased risk for ASCVD, ACE suggests for the use of EPA or IPE in addition to statins. This is a conditional recommendation with a low certainty of evidence. For our eighth recommendation, there is insufficient evidence to recommend for or against the use of EPA or IPE in adults with severe hypertriglyceridemia, which is triglyceride levels of 500 mg per deciliter or more, so there is no recommendation grading for this rec due to insufficient evidence. However, they do include the note that patients should be informed that while EPA monotherapy may lead to a small reduction in myocardial infarction, there may be a risk of potential harm, such as small increased risk of developing AFib and major bleeding. Therefore, a shared decision-making approach that includes a discussion about potential benefits and harms should guide treatment choice. Individuals with severe hypertriglyceridemia were not included in any of the trials. In addition, the trial did not report the effects of EPA or IPE monotherapy on pancreatitis. For our ninth recommendation, in adults with hypertriglyceridemia, which is triglyceride levels from 150 to 499 milligrams per deciliter, who have cardiovascular disease or are at increased risk for cardiovascular disease, ACE suggests against the use of EPA plus DHA in addition to statin therapy. This is a conditional recommendation with a low certainty of evidence. Our 10th recommendation says that there is insufficient evidence to recommend for or against the use of EPA plus DHA in adults with severe hypertriglyceridemia. So this has no recommendation grading due to insufficient evidence, though there is a note that patients should be informed that treatment with doses equal to or greater than 1.8 grams per day of EPA plus DHA resulted in no clinically meaningful reduction in cardiovascular events or mortality, and that there may be an increased risk of potential harms, a small increased risk of developing AFib and major bleeding. Therefore, a shared decision-making approach, including a discussion about potential benefits and harms, should guide treatment choice. Individuals with severe hypertriglyceridemia were not included in any of the trials. Additionally, the trials did not report on the effects of EPA plus DHA on pancreatitis. Our 11th recommendation says that in adults with severe hypertriglyceridemia, which is triglyceride levels between 150 and 499 milligrams per deciliter, who have ASCVD or are at increased risk for ASCVD, ACE recommends against the use of niacin in addition to usual care. This is a strong recommendation with a low certainty of evidence. For our 12th recommendation, there is insufficient evidence to recommend for or against the use of niacin in adults with severe hypertriglyceridemia. Now, this has no recommendation grading due to insufficient evidence, but does include the statement that niacin in combination with statins may lead to a trivial reduction in myocardial infarction, but there is a serious risk of potential harms, including small to moderate increased risk of infection, bleeding, and hospitalization due to hyperglycemic events. Combination drugs containing niacin and statin are no longer approved by the FDA, and individuals with severe hypertriglyceridemia, or triglyceride levels above 500 mg per deciliter, were not included in any of the trials. In addition, the trials did not report the effects of EPA or IPE on pancreatitis. And our last recommendation from ACE says that in adults undergoing pharmacotherapy for dyslipidemia who have ASCVD or are at increased risk for ASCVD, ACE suggests for treatment to an LDL cholesterol target level of less than 70 mg per deciliter. This is a conditional recommendation with a low certainty of evidence. Now, they do include the note that the 2017 recommendation for lower LDL cholesterol treatment targets of less than 55 mg per deciliter was informed by a single trial on a statin plus azetamide. Subsequent meta-analysis of numerous trials in multiple types of agents did not show a difference in cardiovascular events or mortality. Clinicians should engage patients in shared decision-making, including the trivial to small benefits and trivial adverse effects, costs, patient preference, and impact of equity with lower treatment targets. And that wraps up the last of our 13 recommendations from the American Association of Clinical Endocrinology on the pharmacologic management of adults with dyslipidemia. Now, for more information on these guidelines and these dyslipidemia recommendations, make sure to visit us online at guidelinecentral.com 
or download our mobile app available on iOS and Android devices. Thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next time on our next guideline.